welcome back to Ino Football, another Football Tip Friday video. Today's video is five things that you can do to be a better wide receiver. So I'm here in Dallas with Dave Robinson of D-Rob Always Open. He's a two-time national champion at the University of Oklahoma. He won the Big 12 Newcomer of the Year Award, the Derek Shepard Award. And uh, he's going to tell us a little bit on how to be a better wide receiver. So who are some of the people that you've worked with? Yeah, uh, currently some of the guys that I work with in the NFL are um, Adrian Peterson, uh, Antonio Brown, uh, Emmanuel Sanders with the Denver Broncos, Jordan Reed uh, with the Washington Redskins, uh, Rico Gathers, Dallas Cowboys, Bryce Butler with the Dallas Cowboys, uh, just to name a few. So obviously got someone who knows what they're talking about. He works with wide receivers all over the country at all levels. He is the founder and the wide receiver consultant of D-Rob Always Open. The five things that I'm going to be discussing today are the wide receiver stance, his start, uh, catching with his eyes, we're going to be working on releases, and we're also going to be working on body language when running your routes. Cool. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to be talking about today is wide receivers and the stance. Um, it's very important for wide outs to have a good stance because any time a, a college scout or anything like that is evaluating you, the first thing they're going to look at is if the receiver has a proper stance with a good base and a good bend in his back knee um, to try to explode and, uh, and push off the football. All right, so you're going to put your right foot up. Does it matter whether my right foot is up or my left foot is up? Yes, if the ball's inside. Now, if the ball's inside here on the inside on your right, you always want your inside foot up. Okay. All right? The reason why you want your inside foot up is so the timing and everything stays the same with the quarterback. So what, what I want you to do, I want you to put the front, a lot of pressure on that front knee. I want you to make sure you're leaning over. All right? And this back knee right here, let's bring it back just a little bit, okay? And make sure you have a little bend, slight bend right there. And let's bunch your chest over right here so you have a nice forward lean right here. So when you're ready to come off the football, you're already right here low down in your drive phase. And that's what you're running, you're route running. You want to be low and in your drive phase and not be high. So how far apart should my legs be? Does it matter how far apart they are? Left when, when, you're play, when they're playing off, when they're playing off man, yeah. or cover three or cover four, and the defense back playing off, this is a good stance. If the DB walks up on you and gets ready to press you, this leg here needs to shorten up just a little bit. All right, it needs to shorten up. Therefore, so now you can be quicker to get against him. Alright, if it's back long gated, it's a long process to get from here up to here to come to, to, come to balance and the defensive back will have a chance to put his hands on you quicker. Now the number two thing we're going to be working on is your start. Bursting and applying pressure off of the football eating up the defensive back's cushion. Alright, so I'm going to line that up right here in your wide receiver stance. Okay, so when you when you when your receiver stance you want to make sure you're low. Okay, and when he's bursting off the football, you want, you want to eat up the defensive back's cushion, open up your stride, and keep your elbows in as we're attacking like this route. All right? So on my hit, Matt's going to take off running, bursting off the football, and you're going to see him down here low in his drive phase. All right? <clears throat> on my hit. Ready? Hit! There you go. Good. The third thing we're going to be working on today is your release. The release versus the defensive back when he's pressing you or when he's playing off of you, how your hand positioning needs to be, as well as your footwork. I'm going to explain to Matt. I'm going to line him up right here. I'm, now, we're going to explain one thing. When the defensive back is pressing you, you always want your hands up here ready to fight in a fight position. All right? When the defensive back is playing off of you, there's no problem with having your hands down right here. Okay? All right? So you're going to line you up in your stance. Okay? You're going to get your hands caught, ready to fight because I'm pressing you. Okay? Now, first press coverage when the defensive back is pressing you. If you have an out, outside release, all right? Say the ball's inside right here because it's inside the foot's up. You always want to attack and jab at the defensive back's inside foot. The reason why you want to do this is because DBs are taught to take away the inside. Okay? So if, in order for you to get an outside release, you have to attack what he's taught to take away, which is the inside. You have to get this foot to step down so now the defensive back can open the gate. Now you can run your route on your vertical line. So when Matt comes off the football, He's going to take two hard jabs. He's going to take one jab outside, and the second jab, he's going to jab at the defensive back's inside foot, and he's going to get this outside release. We call this the out-in technique. All right, so as soon as I say hook, you're going to jab outside, jab inside of my foot, or you're going to take this outside release. Say it hit, jab, and then jab hard here, and then let's take this outside release. Okay, another release we're going to work on now, we're going to work on our out-in, out release, which is our inside release, okay? So I'm going to line Matt up right here as a receiver. I'm going to be the defensive back, and we're going to work on our out and out technique, okay? So what he's going to do <clears throat> with, this outside, with this outside foot, he's going to jab out, okay? 
Okay. His second step, he's going to jab in. All right. His third step, he's going to jab back out and then get back inside. All right. So I call this the crossover. It's just like you're dribbling a basketball. For those of you who have a basketball background, all you're doing is you're dribbling a basketball. You're taking a step here. You're dribbling between your legs. You're crossing them here and you're crossing them back over. You get back inside. All right. So it's one, two, three. So you're stepping here. Step, 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 and then get back inside. All right. So the movement. The movement. Once you move your feet, the feet it should be here. One, two, three. Just like that. Boom, boom, boom. Just like that. Just like that. Okay. On my, on my hip. All right. Ready. Hit. That's not bad. That's not bad. Make sure, make sure. Versus press coverage. Okay. When, when you're going up against defensive backs. DBs do not like it when you get into their space. So make sure as you're making the moves that you are progressively moving forward into the defensive back to eat up his cushion and make him uncomfortable. So as you're making the move, get into it. Ready? Hit. It's better. It's a little better. Good. Getting better a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> now, the fourth thing we're going to talk about today that is very important with wide outs is being disciplined and catching the football with your eyes, okay? I see a lot of receivers um, on all levels. They're so used to catching the ball that they don't do a, a good enough job training their eyes uh, when the ball comes at them. And sometimes it lets certain catches that they should catch get away from them. So right now I'm going to explain to Matt um, on how he should be catching the ball and tracking everything with his eyes every time the ball comes to him. All right, I call this here taking a picture with the football. One drill that you can do on your own when you're at home working on your hand-eye coordination is this drill right here that I'm about to do with my guy Matt. All right, so you can give me a slight bend at your knee. When it's thrown chest high, remember, make the diamond. Belly button below, thumbs out. Turn your eyes with the football, okay? Good. There you go. Good, making that diamond. There you go. Good. Good, keep turning those hands. Then come back to that side. Yeah, okay. Work on that. Work on that. There you go. Good. A few more. Good. It's a good drill that you can do. You need to be probably doing this probably like three, four days out of the week. Just training your eyes. Good. That's a good job. The fifth thing that we're going to talk about today um, is body language, all right? It's very important for a wide out to have the same body language when you're running your routes because defensive backs, they read your body language when running your routes. First press and off man, body language is key on getting open. So what we're going to work on right now, me and Matt, is a drill that I have with my receivers where I have them sprint at me and I make sure their shoulders and everything are square and that they're not leaning or turning on the blinker indicating their routes on what they're about to do. So what I'm going to have Matt do, Matt's going to run right at me, okay? We're just working on the top end of his route. So say, for instance, the top end of your curl route and the ball's inside right here, what I want you to do is attack me, push vertical, keep your shoulders, everything square, okay? Pump your arms, keep me, hold me here, right down, and you're going to plant and come back down here at 45 degree angle, okay? Now, what this drill is working on is teaching Matt and the receiver to keep his shoulders square at the top of the routes, opposed to as you're running your route, leaning and turning, opening up before you break down. Because remember, defensive backs, they read your body language. Hit. Run at me, break down, boom, boom, boom. Right back here, right back 45 degree. Hit. Run, boom, boom, boom. That's better. Now, Matt, I know you're not a receiver, and it's <laughs> kind of foreign to you, you know, and you still got the little jump cut in you, all right? Yeah. So make sure on your curls and comebacks, when you're breaking down, keep your shoulders, everything square, and once you drop your weight and sink your hips, you have to speed your feet up with three steps, all right? Boom, boom, boom. One, two, three and then come out that break. So that's it. There are the five things that you could do. We learned from D-Rob. D-Rob always open. Man, I got a lot of work to do, but I know these videos are gonna help out. Definitely make sure you follow D-Rob always open on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. As usual, I'll put all those links in the description. Definitely click follow. And if you like this video, definitely subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.